69VE. Ah, there it is. Oh. Yep, that's a tampon. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's going on the grill. Mm. Kydex bending, food grilling. That's weird. It started doing it by itself. What's up guys? Iggy here with FileTech Unlimited. Just got in from washing my truck and time to build more holsters. So you just watched me grab the SD9VE TLR1. And we're gonna go ahead and do an inside the waistband taco and outside the waistband taco. And I'm throwing this gentleman a uh, mag carrier as well. So we're gonna do a full matching set. Should have some fun with it. So check it out. So I'm actually pretty excited, not just for this build, but last night after filming, I decided to clean Coke, my work area, even though those are orders I just put out, but I decided to go through it and organize just a little bit. And I poured uh, some new molds. I used some VAC 25. I used to use VAC 50, but I got a killer deal on the VAC 25. So I built this, made uh, my flashbangs. Then I did a trim jig and tested it all out and everything works great. So I just got to drill that. But... I'm pretty, pretty stoked. I hung up some blue guns and, you know, got the little bit of organizing down that I needed to, but definitely organization is key. As long as you know where everything is, have at it. But all I got to say is a messy bench is a busy bench. So anyways, SD9 VE time. It's going to be, uh, like I said, IWB and OWB, both taco style, which is great because then all we have to do is just flip um, the mounting brackets. So we'll just get on that, tighten this up. If you don't already know, this slot was designed to actually tighten it with a nickel. Got that on there. And here we go. Get your widgets. If you don't have any widgets, you could get these from DIYholster.com. Uh, they sell out pretty quick, and I know they just got a shipment in not long ago. So check out to see if they have it. If not, you'll have to wait for the, the next batch. Let's get this pretty. And before I put that down, I'm gonna do up here. And I'll grab this piece, which I use to prop these up. Grab a smaller one. And then throw this piece on there. Now, if you, I don't know if you can see it from there. So if I'll pick this up. See how there's a big angle because it's much wider? We are going to take a small piece of blocking like so and we'll tape that right there and what that, that what that will do is bump up the blocking so that stays level much better all right and then there's going to be another piece right here to block that there we go and this is going in uh, desert tan so it should nice nice color they they actually look good when they're when they're done I ordered more molds from Pale Horse. I had a police department call me up in Iowa, I think it was, or an officer from the department who's looking for holsters. So I ended up ordering the molds to uh, accommodate for that. And that was not fun, but hey, 
that's needed. And the way I uh, the way I do all this stuff is the more molds I have, the more I can offer. So, and and honestly, I'm gonna I'll, I'm gonna tell you this right up front. There is literally no skill in vacuum forming. I think in holster making, it's you got the top guys with leather because I have no idea how to work leather. So more power to them. I wouldn't mind getting into it, but that's just a whole bunch of headaches, time, and money that I don't need to spend. But doing this on foam, personally, well, actually, we know this. It's just a lot harder than to do this on vacuum forming. So it is what it is. I said what I said. Obviously, you get a better result and more uniform results when you vacuum form, which is why... I do vacuum forming from my stores and everything like that, but I still will do the vacuum forming for customers as long as I have the molds. Now, the way I do business is I, I like to buy the full mold because I do the flashlights. Now, I'm not going to spend, you know, $100 per mold with the flashlight. I'd rather do this each time. You know, maybe in the future that'll change, maybe not, but I've been doing this for six years now and... Not really getting tired of it, but it's definitely the way I like to run what I'm doing. Not to mention, you know, when people people call me up, hey, I need this gun with this light. Nobody can do it. Can you? I'll be like, yeah, you got to say please. Other than that, I will do it and get it out to them. So if you want to buy, let's say, 10 molds master those and then move on to the next set by all means do it figure out how the kydex bends do everything you got to do and be proficient at your craft so that's how i run what i do because once you start doing this you really like <laughs> every time you look at a gun you're like oh it's gonna be a pain the you know pain the butt to block but you look at things differently All right, so here we go. The SD9 has nothing on this side, so we don't have to worry about it. But let's see here. What are we doing first? Uh, this is going to be an IWB right hand uh, with 1.75 foamy. So we will throw this on here, build that up, and then we'll put a block here. That'll give us that. And then when we swap it to do the other side, it's going to be a tech lock. I could do this blocking for the Safari Land because it fits the uh, the tech lock there, but you can see it's so much larger. Or I could use this, which fits this, and I made this many years ago, and I could just stick that right there, and then bam, there you go, it fits the tech lock. So I'm probably going to do probably going to do this one. So. First things first, let's do the IWB right-handed. Uh, this is the one we'd use for no cant. Uh, he actually has listed no cant, so we will do it as no cant. Trigger guard is right here. So I like to put the top of this right where you can see that the trigger meets the grip. And you want it down low enough to where it doesn't mess anything up with the sight channel. So we will place this right here. There's nothing under it, so currently it will fall if we press it. And we're going to have to build it up. And that's what I use the dowels for. I think that's going to be way too tall. Yep. And perfect. Just took a peek at this again. It's still a little bit high for my liking. So just keep going down the line and see what I like. I think that's going to be, that's too low. Yep. No big deal. Well, it's kind of the same thing. Small chunk of the quarter inch MDF going underneath it. That's perfect right there. I like that. So, I'll put that in place. All 
All right, and like I said, with light bearing holsters, it is imperative that you put something right here. When you have your foamy here, see how 10% of the clip is on touching something? So that means when it's on the uh, the belt, when they go to pull it, only 10% of that clip is, is wrapped around the belt. So there's nothing really holding it there because the metal foamies that I use, they're so smooth that they will uh, allow you to not do anything. So what you want to do is build up the material so it actually touches it. And you'll, you will remember that this is underneath that. So you really won't see it. You can make it pretty. You can do it however you want. But as long as it's there, you'll be fine. So we will take this. Lock this in place. And the only thing left to do, two things, turn my oven on because I'm going to preheat. Still, it's kind of a chilly day here in New Hampshire. It's, I mean, it's nice in the sun, but the wind is, is howling and the garage is half underground, so it stays cold all year around. So we're going to throw that on there. So my foam is uh, kind of hard right now, but we have to do the retention and that'll be it. So let's grab that. Line up your sight channel, or at least square it up, and then draw, or just do the outline. Bam! I'm gonna cut it. Perfect. Put this as close as possible to the center. Then take the widest tape you have. Hold it in the center. And then squeeze it down. Make that right angle. Cool. Try to get it as flat as you can. Again, this is um, desert, so I will go ahead and grab that piece. I'm grilling, at least I think I'm grilling, some uh, some chickens and stuff. I cannot wait. I'm do some nice barbecue chicken on the grill. Mmm, smoke the bella. Ah, I can't wait. Mmm, it's gonna look good. But this is uh, bending, so let's get that good. 246, and then what I do once it gets halfway, I will rotate it 180 degrees. in there push down and stretch it over there go and bring it to pound town He presses on, chicken's marinating, uh, 410 out of 110, we're going to go ahead and get the piece that we need, and we're just doing a uh, single mag carrier that's uh, double stacked for this firearm. We'll get that going, I'm adding it in as, a, as it gets because we changed up the order a little bit, so should be fun, 
Let's go ahead and do it. Peel that. This is the steel mesh that I use. Go the hole, throw that on there, and then find the appropriate one. We're going to set up uh, universals soon. I don't have the universals yet. I just decided to do all this stuff. So I went ahead and I made this out of wood just because I needed something and I didn't have enough to make another one. But it works. So, yeah. Anyways, we're going to drop that in there. And in 110 seconds, it'll come out.
whenever you have an MRD, you have to drill it out because normal hardware won't fit. So just drill it out. Or you buy the specific hardware that does. I don't mind drilling it so I keep using the same hardware. Got a new bottle. Went to blue. They didn't have red. Really? It doesn't matter. You could use what you want. Red is pretty much if you don't want to take it back off again. But if you're using an impact driver like I do, it will snap them free. You just have to hold each side. So it still is doable. Use whatever you want. But this is what they had. It's $42. I have an account with them, so I got it for $24. Bucks. So I really can't complain. Perks of being a mechanic, when I have a uh, commercial account open up with uh, some parts stores, so I pretty much get everything at like half cost, which is which is really nice. Anyways, so there's um, the mag carrier that's going to be used for um, this setup. It's going to be for an SD9 VE. I always form on Glocks because Glocks are the widest, so it will work with anything else uh, other than them. So all we have to do is. Uh, We've got to clean it up a little bit to get all the crud out. But this is going to be, um, got to have a foamy put on it with my logo. And it's going to go with the rest of the holster. So I will put this in the bin. I'm going to put the guy's order in the bin. And as soon as that's ready to come out, which it should be right now, let's go. I'll go get it. There it is. And. Like I said, we're doing an inside and an outside. I like that. So I'll go ahead and pop this off. We don't need these anymore. So, take that off. Leave that in place. this we are adding this plate right here keep in mind where you're it's right here so we're gonna move it over just a little bit now I don't think this is RMR cut nope so we don't have to worry about that but we're gonna anchor this make sure it's square right where it is okay Everything else stays the same. All right. So again, I will pop the new uh, new piece in there. We'll process this. And go from there. I went ahead and mapped it out. So we got a. Uh, Pretty much the shape of the holster that we're going to do drilled cleaned and deburred and now we're ready to take this and bring it to the um the the sauce get them going
These bad boys, a couple of those bad boys, a couple of these bad boys, a couple of those bad boys. Hooray! All right. These are quarter inch, quarter inch, and then three eighths, I think. I have to look at that size. You can literally rewind and see what size I have. It's written on the uh, the bin there, and because this is not adjustable, I go ahead and I lock these down. Wipe my nice thumbprint off of that. All right, I will square it up. shiny clean again quarter inch quarter inch and these are four or point four three seven five and there we have it so here's our inside the waistband uh, other one when it comes out, which I'll pull it out in a minute, is going to be this exact same thing, but it's going to have boop, that right there. 
So in all technicality, if you wanted to, so you don't have to uh, set up and break down molds and stuff like that, if you order, or not order, but if you set it up however you want, like in all technicality, let's pretend this is the blocking I used. We can put that here. So you could have this on this side and this here. So the end user or yourself can pop this off and put this on and you just converted your IWB to an OWB. So you can keep that stuff in mind when you're putting together holsters because there's always a way to convert it. Uh, I do not recommend doing a pancake style, converting that to inside because that's just a pain in the butt. And some people, you know, request it and I always tell them they're wrong, but I'll make it if they wanted to, but it's just, it's not comfortable because it's big and cumbersome and you're not, you're not going to like it. So once everything's all set with the other one, we're going to do the test fit and we're going to be copacetic. So let's pull the other one out. See how that looks. It's like deja vu. So wait for it, wait for it. Bam. Perfect. Just how I wanted it. Can you hear that? That's the sound of the internals of the uh, TLR. Like I said, I shattered them. So, and that's not from foam pressing. I dropped it and I busted the glue. So you don't have to worry about that. You won't break a light. Just take the batteries out. So now that this is all set, take all of this apart. My nice clean bench. It's okay because I'm gonna I'm gonna get in the habit of as soon as I finish it, I'm gonna clean it and then start again because it's terrible. But let's check this. A little tight. Which is no big deal because I cinch these down. Perfect. Oh that felt good. And here's a tip for you. If you notice here, my flashlight does not protrude past the kydex. This is what you want to know. If you're, uh, actually it'd be better to show it. If you take your flashlight, right, and it's behind the kydex and you push on it, it's pushing on the kydex. If your flashlight protrudes past the kydex, and let's say this is an inside the waistband like this, and you sit down, your leg can boop, pop this out of the holster. So it will literally push on the flashlight in turn, attach to your firearm and push it out. And then you could go ahead and lose your firearm and you don't want to do that. So make sure 100%, unless the customer really wants it. Again, we don't recommend it, but the customer, they could, if it leaves your door like this, it's fine. They'll probably cut it if they want it like that, but strongly urge not to have that happen. But as long as the Kydex is protruding past the flashlight, you will have zero issues. So this, I think, is perfect. And we're going to go ahead and I will bring you to the stage of uh, mounting this one because it's literally the exact same thing as this. So, with the exception of that. So grab this. Put it where we want it. There's your three markings. So we'll go ahead and drill these two, drill those three, cut it in literally the same shape, and add the hardware. So that should take about seven minutes, and we'll be all done with all three of these. And there we got all three. So the tech lock, combat loop, literally a mirror image of what we just did. And then I put the clip on this guy, which you saw in the beginning. So, IWB, OWB, and this can be worn as either or. So there's your all three. Hell yeah. And remember to always respect the hustle. <laughs> I'm gonna get nasty.